So I just had surgery. I've got compression socks on. I've had all my pre-talks from the anesthesiologist and my ENT and everything else. And up until now, neither of us have ever been hospitalized or needed surgery in a foreign country before, which is shocking really, considering all the crazy stuff we do. <laughs> because we've been nomads for over a decade, first by RV, and then the last six years have been sailing about the world. And over that time, we've had a lot of different medical services in different countries. And for a while, we didn't have insurance, we just self-paid. But more and more, it's becoming a requirement to have global health insurance to enter certain countries, especially as a sailor or anyone applying for a visa. Because even if a country has universal health care for their citizens, it doesn't mean that they're going to be willing to fit the bill for us travelers. Plus, as we started traveling to more remote areas, we knew that we wanted emergency evacuation coverage. So now we have health insurance that covers us anywhere in the world except for the USA. And we're U.S. citizens. And that is because the U.S. has the most expensive healthcare system in the entire world. Yet it's not rated the best healthcare system in the entire world. Go figure. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience of having surgery in a foreign country. Yeah, I'm told that I'm just gonna hate my ENT for about two weeks. And medical care and costs from around the world. And as a bonus, I'll tell you where to download the most comprehensive medical guide I have ever found. It covers everything from first aid to how to deliver a baby and even burial at sea. But first, my surgery and the rain. <laughs> I had bilateral extended fests, septoplasty, and turbinoplasty, which basically means that I had a gigantic roto-rooter through my sinus cavities because they were just really narrow and I had a deviated septum that kept me from breathing properly, which caused sinus pressure, pain, headaches, and all sorts of infections. No COVID means surgery's a go. We'll see you on the other side. Bye. Love Bye. you. Bye. Love you. It's such a, a weird time. Bye. To watch her walk in and not be able to join her and they've basically asked me because of COVID rules and regulations to stay in the car not to come in um, not even walk her up to the door. Kind of reminds me of after 9-11 before then, we could, you know, walk our, our family and friends all the way to the terminal, you know, go inside and see their plane off and watch them leave. And it was just such a such an experience. And then after 9-11, that stopped. So weird just to drop them off at the parking lot, not be allowed into the airport. It's just weird because it's new and it's different. But I guess it might be the new normal. I don't know. Uh, but I hope everything goes well. I'm gonna go drive off and go to the grocery store and sit around for six hours while she has two hours of surgery and four hours of recovery and then come and pick her up when they call me. Yeah, just weird. This is something I've needed to have done for a while, but because of where we've been in the world, it's been tricky and then just got extra delayed because of COVID. But I am three weeks into my recovery now and I am breathing like a champ. <laughs> and let me tell you, it is incredible how much breathing affects our bodies because I feel like I have so much more energy and I am sleeping through the night, which is something that I didn't used to do before. So that's awesome. And because it was an endoscopic surgery from the outside, I look exactly the same. My stitches and my scars are all inside my nose. Um, I feel pretty good. I'm very tired and I'm very, um, yeah, mostly just tired, but I can, I can breathe through my nose and that's pretty spectacular. So this was my first major procedure abroad and the first time I've ever filed a claim with our health insurance because our plan is catastrophic meaning it covers major medical emergencies and procedures like my surgery. We have free choice over which hospitals and doctors we want to go to. We have emergency dental. It works anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. except for the USA. <laughs> and most importantly, it has comprehensive medical evacuation and repatriation because we go to some extremely remote places. And this type of plan is the most affordable because we pay out of pocket for general care, which outside of the USA isn't a big deal, 
because the costs are wildly lower. I hesitate to share the cost of our insurance because it varies dramatically based on your medical history and your needs. But I have shared our costs over on our website along with a ton of additional information. If you wanna check it out, I'll put a link in the description below. And if you're seriously looking for a plan right now, then I would contact our broker, Arno. This is not a sponsored plug and I don't get anything if you do. It's just that he's a fellow cruiser and he's been our insurance broker for years. He knows all the different companies, their plans, which ones work best for which types of travelers, and in general, just provides a great service. Now, costs for medications, and services on the other hand are more straightforward. So here are some examples. In New Zealand, I had a CT scan and an exam with an ENT. I really liked my doctor, but I was on the fence about seeing the inside of my nose on such a big screen. As for the surgery itself, the facilities were all well appointed, clean, and the staff was kind and caring. Overall, I'm a happy customer and the insurance company paid my bills promptly and then I paid my deductible. Now that's just here in New Zealand, so here are some other examples from around the world. Less than 24 hours on a weekend, and here I am, new crown in hand. Medications have been easy to get and reasonable too. For example, in the US, I paid $200 for a prescription antibiotic that here in New Zealand only cost me 12 bucks. Now, the services and facilities can vary from country to country, but that's pretty easy to research and plan ahead for. We just ask the rectangle of knowledge. For the extremely remote islands that we visited, the facilities have been bare bones. And on some islands, there are no people. <laughs> In those cases, we come with our satellite communications and fully prepared to take care of ourselves. But in general, we have been able to find caring, knowledgeable, and experienced doctors throughout our travels. And in some places like Mexico, Panama, South Africa, here in New Zealand, we've had incredible care at a fraction of what it would cost in the USA. In other words, healthcare as a traveler can be great. And if you plan on setting off about the world, then I suggest downloading the ship's captain's medical guide. This is the free guide I mentioned earlier that covers an insane number of scenarios. And I've listed the link over on our website along with a ton of other information. So go check it out right after you watch this video on my very first remote island hospital visit. It's nail biter. <laughs>